I'll read the title poem to my collection, uh, The Dark Film, which, which is called The Dark Film. It recalls a fascination with credits, the credits to movies. I remember when I first came to London that people sat in the cinema and watched the credits. And growing up in Liverpool, no one had done that. Everyone had rushed out as soon as you saw the end. Uh, apart from me, I used to like credits because they would, by the time the film had got that far north, the print was usually pretty degraded and scratched. And I used to love the adverts as well. It came on before the movie for the local carpet warehouse or whatever. That was just so, it looked like someone had been dancing on it. It was just so degraded, that image. And something about seeing that kind of visual noise, that age in the celluloid really stayed with me. Um, and I ended up writing a poem about it. The Dark Film. The dark film goes on general release. Floodlights rake the low cloud base above the scratchy London plains and iron palings of Leicester Square. Unrated dark, two hours long. We wonder where the film was shot. The nightmare stopped, or Empire State caught midway through a power cut. Or if they'd left the lens cap on and gone with it, declared it art. Or if this were a film at all, or leader tape blocking the light. But something happens to the print the further on into its run, the further out each reel is sent. Audiences start seeing things. An eyelash in Hitchens Regal grows four foot long, electrified, a hairspring from a town hall clock in the screen's top right-hand side. And in the Brighton Hippodrome, a pair of tracks cut by a bad projector somewhere on the road from Soho leaves them mesmerised. And by the time the film has reached the oil rigs and the inset aisles, it crackles like a bonfire and radiant fibres twitch and turn to thistle down and stars, scratches to flack, to Dolby bumps felt in the gut, a trace of fire of dust, then faces looked at long enough.